Hello, and welcome to episode three of the Northway Basketball Podcast. I am your host, Keon Mears. Now, you are now listening to our podcast, and uh, we're going to get into a number of topics, and I'm not going to waste any time. Um, as you know, our top 50 ranking came out. Uh, we gave a sneak peek of the top five. A lot of people were interested. A lot of people signed up to know coaches if you're looking for the best prospects in Canada we put together a comprehensive list with a comprehensive detailed scouting reports of the top 50 Canadian basketball prospects that will not only potentially play division one basketball but have an immediate impact on your program because you see a lot of guys go to the division one level and they got to sit for a year or two years and we understand how competitive it, it is with the transfer portal and how imperative it is to have high character, talented kids who are come who are ready to come and contribute right away. So we've made a list for you to do it just exactly that. So if you haven't already, check out the northway.org and take a look at our top 50 scouting report, ranking, whatever you want to call it. So <clears throat> this week has been a busy week. Um, we've seen the resurgence of a high school phenom, Canadian phenom. And I'm not surprised. I said this was the best move he's made in his entire career. Um, I think a lot of times, like, you know, when you have a fish that grows outgrows its bowl, you have to send them to more challenging environments to help them continue to grow. Because sometimes staying within a comfortable environment can um, give you a false sense of, you know, what's out there. So I think Elijah Fisher going to pair with Dave Smart this season has been one of the biggest moves in basketball and we're start in Canadian basketball, I should say, and we're starting to see it play out. Um, Dave Smart is forcing him to shoot threes. He's forcing him to develop. Um, Dave Smart is an elite Canadian coach who's won a number of U sport championships with Carleton basketball before his time at Texas Tech. And now as the head coach of Pacific, um, you're going to see him really turn that program around. He's uh, he's really addicted to the craft. But before I get into Elijah Fisher, I'm going to tell you about Dave Smart and exactly why I love his pairing. My friend played for, uh, my friend's brother actually played for the Team Canada, uh, I think it was U17 at the time. And uh, Dave Smart was the head coach, and he had one of his Carlton kids on the team. And my friend's brother is arguably the best shooter in the country at that time. For the whole entire camp, that whole two two weeks, Dave Smart told the player who was committed to Carlton, and mind you, my friend's brother's going Division One. every morning at 6 a.m., knock on his door and challenge him to a shooting competition. He never beat him, but the fact that you would challenge someone and push them outside of their comfort zone, knowing what you could get out of him, and then what you could also do for your team and your program for that two weeks of coaching Team Canada and uh, just coming up short in the finals against uh, Team USA, I, I was blown away when he told me that story. Uh, you hear the stories about Dave Smart having this guy stay all off season in the summer <clears throat> in Canada, shooting 250 to 500 makes a day during the season. Guys like Philip Scrub, Thomas Scrub. Um, it's no wonder, you know, that you, you see Carlton have that success. And I do I think it's applicable to the States? Yes, I do. So now to see that Eliza Fisher has significantly improved his footwork in the paint, developing a number of finishes, <clears throat> being able to shoot it with confidence off the catch, off the bounce in the mid range, off the from three on the move. Um, it's amazing to see because now this opens up a number of possibilities. Um, a lot of time it's just about changing the environment and who's on your team. And Dave Smart is definitely going to always hold guys accountable. So I think that's the best move him and his team made, and kudos to those guys. And I think it's fair to say and start having that conversation again, like will he be an NBA prospect again? Because we saw what he did against Arkansas. Yes, he's in his third year, but his game will transfer to the next level potentially, not as a main guy, but I think as a role guy who can knock down threes, get on in transition, defend, and, and learn to be a high-level contributing professional basketball player. And there's nothing wrong with that. Not everyone is meant to be um, a go-to. Maybe he will be. I don't know. I don't know the future. However, 
I think he's at a point now in a trajectory where if he continues to develop, the NBA is definitely a real possibility in the future again, right? Um, moving on, uh, let's talk about Miles Sadler. I've been telling you guys about Miles Sadler. I've been trying to preach to these coaches that he is a high major prospect, right? He's proved it by leading uh, CIA Bella Vista prep against prolific prep and winning that game by four. He had 19 points and seven assists. Mind you, Darren Peterson didn't play. However, he showed up. He did what he was supposed to do. And Miles Sadler is a gamer. Moving forward, they're out in Houston for a Thanksgiving showcase. And what do they do? They play against the Boozer Twins. Um, in a game they could have won. But guess who showed up again? Mr. Reliable. Miles Sadler. They ended up losing that game, but he did perform. And there are things he could have improved on as far as utilizing his mid-range game more. But he did what he was supposed to do, right? So when you see guys consistently perform against high major, high level talent, and not just perform, compete, shine, make a statement, I think it says something. So at six foot, you see him really just managing his team, making high level decisions, shooting the ball with range. Now he's forcing the defenders to guard him out further, which gives him more room to play and operate off the pick and roll. So it puts the defense at a disadvantage because now if you're in drop, you give him a head of steam. If you hard hedge, you help him potentially beat the beat the hedge or split it and 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 find guys and for threes and layups. And you've seen him do it all game. So Miles Sadler is a special talent. I think he's a potential NBA player. And I think that high measure schools are finally starting to catch on as he took his visit to Arizona State. And you see him start getting uh, offers like from Syracuse and things of that nature. It's just a great thing to see. But I think you guys really need to take him seriously. Uh, Spencer Aarons has been taking a number of vis visits also from a Bella Vista grind session. Um, at 6'10", 6'11", he can do it all. He has, his skill translates to the highest level of basketball. And <clears throat> it's just great to see, man. Um, Jordan Charles, who doesn't get mentioned enough, sometimes overshadowed by Miles, but he is really taking his game to another level. He also showed out in that Houston um, tournament. Uh, he also had a great summer for Team Canada. And it's just amazing to see what they have going on over there at Arizona in Arizona, and I think schools should definitely pay more attention to them. And now let's go to Liam. Uh, Liam Mid-Caro, um, out of Iowa, United Prep. He's a 6'4", freshman point guard, class of 2028. Man, he reminds me so much of Shane, not necessarily his looks, but the way he plays his game, his mannerisms, the way he carries himself, the way he plays at his own pace and the way he's able to get to his spots, create space to get his shot off, the way his jump shot is. He really reminds me of Shane. He's 6'4". As a freshman, he plays with great pace. He plays like a pro. He can decision-make. He can handle pressure. He can handle, handle contact. A lot of kids get bumped off the ball. They can't really handle and create angles for themselves under pressure. But he's doing it at such a young age. And he has a size and a length to match. So Iowa United is one of the best programs, the best Canadian prep programs. They have a number of top prospects. They have had a number of high major schools visit their facility. And... They have NBA prospects as well, um, and they're big. In Arafan, Dion, I'm sorry, I don't even know how his name, but he is a center for them, and he's definitely getting NBA attention. So if you haven't already, get in with Liam Medicaro. He's He's been garnering a lot of interest from mid-time major schools, and Oregon is just one of them. So if I were you guys, I would definitely take a look at Liam Medicaro, who's from Alberta, Ontario, and he's playing up for Iowa United's national team and their, their, their junior team. So uh, this past weekend, I went to day two of the Holden Prep Classic. There were some guys I wanted to see who I haven't seen before. Um, <clears throat> and before I even get into this, let's just talk about how I look at scouting, how I look at recruiting, how I look at top 50, or how we do uh, create our top 50. I think – how your skill set translates to the highest level of basketball is very important because not necessarily that you're talented enough to play at that level, but the way your game is constructed, it translates to that level, which means a lot of the time you can play in division one, division two basketball, right? 
So if you have a point guard who can run pick and rolls, who can defend pick and rolls, who can shoot the ball at a high clip and decision make, he's a high level player, right? He can play low, mid, low to mid D1, depending on his size, athleticism, and other variables, right? So for us over here, you know, I've spent time with a number of NBA scouts and GM and coaches. I've played against a lot of NBA players in the high school and, and then some I spent some time in college playing against them as well, you know, growing up where I grew up and just playing in the States as well. Um, I think it's helped me understand what a high level player looks like and 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 given me an understanding of how to uh grade, I guess, and look at talent given, you know, the privileges I've had meeting with NBA professionals and then also playing. Um so Without further ado, I'm going to get into some guys I saw at the Holden Prep Classic who really impressed me. Um, Owen Frain, who is a fifth-year PG from Lincoln Prep, who had a great game against Code Prep. Um, he handled himself really well under pressure. There was a lot of it was a really scrappy game. Uh, the, the defense was really physical. They were talking a lot, trying to get in his head, but he stayed poised. He made great decisions. He shot the ball with range consistently this is what you're looking for at the next level he did made a good a, a great decisions out of the pick and roll um he even found guys on the backside for alley-oops found guys in the corner for threes he was hitting guys in the pocket uh he was finishing at the rim looking off his defenders he is someone who is definitely a division one potential talent and i think schools if you value shooting and decision making then you should definitely recruit on frame um, I was really impressed by the fifth year senior. Um, <clears throat> also, Fernando de los Santos, who plays for St. Jude's Academy. Um, he's a 6'4 senior point guard, fifth year point guard, class of 2025. He recently played this summer for the Dominican national team, where we saw him have some good games, some big games, and <clears throat> he's really improved his ability to shoot the ball, um, shooting it with, with uh, consistency off the catch. Getting into the mid range, or whether it's attacking a baseline and fading, um, or just getting to a spot in the mid range, and then he's tough at six four. He can defend. He can pick guys up full court. He can lead your team. He can get on in transition, and he can finish at the rim through contact. I really love his game. He's scrappy. He's long. He's wiry, strong. <clears throat> Not the most athletic, but he's athletic enough. And I think <clears throat> he's someone you will definitely want at the next level as a disruptor. And as a leader, and he'll definitely contribute to winning. Um, that's someone who's flying under the radar as well, and I think coaches should take the time to look at him. Um, Jack Brumley, um, a 6'8", power forward from Code Prep, who's currently playing for Corey Joseph's father. Corey Joseph's father is obviously extremely uh, um, crucial in the development of Corey Joseph. Corey Joseph, if you don't know, was the number one point guard in America, until Kyrie Irving came out of nowhere with St. Benedict's and took over that ranking. And he was number two from then moving forward. But that says a lot for a Canadian kid from Canada to be the number two point guard in America and make it all the way to the league and win a championship. So I think Corey Joseph's dad definitely knows a thing or two about development. Uh, David Joseph. David Joseph has this kid, um, Jack Brumley, who can play out of the post. He's strong. He's tall. He's white wide um sorry tall strong long wiry strong and he can turn left shoulder right shoulder he could hook you to death he can face up and hit the jumper he can play out of the, the pocket in the pick and roll and finish above and around the rim and i think he is someone division one coaches should definitely look at um he's also tough he rebounds in traffic and he could finish through contact so i definitely think if you are a division one program looking for a big who can contribute right away, then you need to recruit Jack. You need to take a look at Jack Rumley and, and go out to Code Prep. Also, Adam from Fort Erie International Academy. I'm not going to pretend like I know how to say his last name. I apologize. Uh, here's my attempt. Adam Elohibucus is a 6'4 shooting guard um, out of Milton. <clears throat> he's had a great year thus thus far. I've seen him play earlier in the fall classic for Fort Erie. He played extremely well off the ball, um, shooting the ball off the catch, on the move, and I mean from three. Um, he come off pin downs, 
I mean, sprinting around the court full speed, hitting threes. He is definitely a Division One sniper. And I'm encouraging and urging schools, if you value shooting, to recruit Adam. Adam is the best shooter on their team. He's had a big game against a nationally top 10 ranked team in DME. He had 24 points, right? This is someone you need. The game is about shooting and spreading the floor. And he could shoot it from deep with range. Mind you, in Canada, we shoot from the FIBA three-point line, which is deeper than the high school line in America and also the uh, collegiate line. So we are accustomed to shooting professional level threes, which is close to the NBA three, not quite the NBA three, but close enough. So if you recruit Adam, you're getting someone who's ready to uh, contribute to winning right away as far as a shooter and, and space in the floor. Um, also, someone who's been a stock riser as of, as of late is Jacob McGregor, who's a 6'3 point guard out of Bill Crothers Prep. Um, he reminds his style, play, not talent, style, reminds me a lot of, Jay, of Damian Lillard. He could shoot the ball with range. He could play out of the mid-range. He could get to the rim and finish with a floater, layups, do contact, and a variety of footwork to get to the rim and finish. And he's a lights-out shooter. Um, you give him space, he's going to shoot it with range. Um, he, he still needs to learn to be a playmaker. Um, but as far as scoring the ball, I think he's someone um, every program needs. He's a class of 2026 20, point guard from uh, Bill Crothers, prep, 6'3", plays for Uplay. Uh, best uh, Canadian AAU team, AAU program right now. And I think he's definitely someone that colleges should look at. He's currently getting interest from a number of schools that he asked me not to disclose. So I would definitely take a look at his film and take the opportunity to go watch him play. So that was that. And those are just a couple of things I kind of wanted to get into today. Um, so now for our free game segment, this is for kids, players who um, really want to take their game to the next level. And there were some prospects I spoke to that past week about what it means to be a dog. And, and I don't mean fighting people, getting in people's faces. I mean, your level of compete, right? Um, to me, it says a lot about a kid. <clears throat> and I, this is what I consider a dog, is someone who <clears throat> is extremely competitive, like, if you're giving up size, or can you rebound in traffic? Can you dive on the floor for a loose ball? Are you talking on defense? Are you, when things get physical, do you shy away or do you keep playing through it? So these are things to me that make up a dog. And it's really more so your mental makeup and your ability to compete, your compete level. Because right now we see a lot of guys with the skill work. And that's great. It's cool. But what's your compete level at? Right? Um those to me are the dogs. So like when you have skill level with compete level, high compete level, you have something special. And a lot of the times these kids will understand, like if you just compete hard, your skill set will take care of itself, right? Dive on the floor, talk on defense, rebound the ball, rebound in traffic, box out, put a body on someone, challenge shots at the rim, um, compete on defense, move your feet in and out of the post, like whatever position you're guarding, these are things that, translate to the highest levels of basketball it's needed it's always going to be needed you got to find a reason to stay on the floor because my friend if you are not a high level scorer out of high school or mcdonald's all-american most of the time they're not recruiting you to be a high level scorer they're recruiting you to be a role player so this is the game i'm giving to the next generation if you're going to compete and you're you're competing with uh, the transfer portal you're competing with other high school kids for a scholarship you need to be a dog because Unless you are a McDonald's All-American, it's not just your talent that's going to separate you. There's other things. you got to be able to play a role at a high level. So to me, that is what a what a dog is. And a lot of parents have been asking me questions lately uh, about development. I think skill training is good. You need skill trainers. However, uh, development isn't rocket science, right? You need to work on your body. You need to work on your game every day. Find a way, have, find a routine. Make sure it's measurable. Use the smart, um, the smart acronym, right? You want to have measurable goals, things you can measure by like your weight, your shooting percentage, um, speed, uh, strength, things of that nature, right? Uh, so let's keep it simple. There's no, um, like NBA players or collegiate player, Division One players are not esoteric. They aren't godlike. They just decided to commit themselves, right? I used to play with a guy called Nick Stelskis, named Nick Stelskis. And I remember one thing he said to me 
uh, when we were working out in his backyard with his dad, he said, master your mind, master your life, right? He understood that from a young age. He disciplined himself to stick to his craft every single day and get better at it. 500 to 1,000 makes with ball handling, right? And, and once he mastered that, that opened a number of doors, like working out with Jamal Crawford in the summer, working out with Steve Nash, you know, just getting access to the NBA players early and getting that game on what it takes to be really good at basketball. So these are the things that people don't know, right? It's really simple. It's not rocket science. So you don't have to have a billion dollars to get better. It doesn't take that much. NBA games come on free on TV. College games are free on TV. You can always watch and study the game. You don't need synergy. You don't need <clears throat> a subscription. It's free. It's, there's YouTube, right? So... There's so many ways to get better now where there's really no excuse. So I just want to thank everyone for listening to episode three of the Northway Basketball Podcast. Coaches, if you would like, and if you haven't, please subscribe to our newsletter. Please send us a DM. Please check out the northway.org. Contact us there. Any parents who need help, any kids who need help, feel free to shoot us a message. Message me at Keon Mears on Instagram, Twitter. And then you could look, find us on Instagram at the Northway and Twitter at the Northway. And lastly, again, check out the Northway.org. Coaches, our top 50 ranking is there. Our scouting service is on sale. If you need a free trial, please feel free to reach out to me and we'll take care of you. That is the end of today's episode three. We just want to thank you for listening. Peace. Have a great week.